uh, meaning something like parallel city or parallel society. And um, it started out uh, when we were, um, when I was involved with a controversial art group that did things like pirate broadcast of nuclear explosion on live TV and uh, stealing the flag of the Czech president from the castle. So I think the cool thing if you want to play capture the flag is to play it in the real world, not on some computer games. So things like that. And I've been interacting with the artists, with the artists. And uh, I was uh, telling them also with uh, Pavel Luptak Wilder uh, about this new form of money, which was Bitcoin. And the artis artists uh, started saying, okay, so let's play with it. Let's try it out in the real world. And we also need a, a place to interact with uh, our audience, uh, me meaning our fans and more importantly, our haters. So we thought, okay, let's just uh, rent... Uh, small room, we will showcase our art and we will, you know, sell coffee for Bitcoin. Uh, then, of course, the artists um, uh, came to this place and, and signed a rental agreement for a three-story building. <laughs> so we had to uh, decide what to do with it. And uh, one of the founding premises of this place is that we are going to completely run it on Bitcoin at the time uh, uh, and now on cryptocurrencies in general and uh, by completely running meaning we will only accept uh, cryptocurrencies, we will pay all our employees in cryptocurrencies and all the, uh, the, the whole economy of the, of the house, which is not only a cafeteria, is based purely on, on crypto. So what it is, is a house in uh, Prague, in Holoshovice, that consists of uh, a cafeteria. Uh, it's the first crypto-only cafeteria in the world. Uh, I will tell you something more about it. Um, then we decided we need a, a place where we could create some companies, some services, some non-profits uh, and help people uh, kind of foster this ecosystem. Uh, so we, uh, the, the second floor uh, is a Paper Hub, which is a co-working space. And now we are uh, slowly turning it or uh, 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 placing an incubator for startups there. Uh, in the beginning, we had a 3D printing, printing shop in the basement where we were doing workshops and, um, uh, and also commercial printing for, uh, for customers. Uh, but the place was too small for the company. It outgrew us, so they moved to another place. Now uh, it uh, contains a crypto hackerspace, although we have some 3D printers. And if you enter the place, you can see that something is different, that many, many things are just printed on 3D printers. Um, then uh, uh, the top floor is something we call Institute of Crypto Anarchy, which is a joke that m many people don't get, because usually when they see a word anarchy, they uh, shut their brains off and say, oh, these guys are, you know, in hoodies throwing uh, rocks at parliament and McDonald's or something. Uh, so they don't uh, even start, usually they don't even start thinking uh, that it's kind of stupid to have an institute of <laughs> crypto anarchy. Uh, but that's what we wanted to um, put on, uh, on top of the building. So when you um, when you enter, you know that you're in some weird place. So all this is decided to make people a little bit uneasy when they enter. They're not completely sure what's going on. And if they don't turn around and leave, which many do, uh, they can learn some new cool things about crypto and about freedom. Um, I will tell you later on what's our vision, why we are doing this. We're also organizing a Hackers Congress uh, in two weeks, which is a crypto anarchistic conference. Uh, how many people have been to HCPP before? Okay, a few hands. Is anyone planning to go in two weeks? Oh, even more, amazing. For those of you who don't have tickets, ask on Facebook. There are uh, plenty of tickets for sale and we'll also be streaming, so no worries. 
All right, so some photos from the space so you get a feel. This is our head barista who is operating the coffee machine and uh, uh, doing uh, the menu. What you notice is that the bar, uh, maybe you don't notice it's from this photo, um, but the, the bar is in the center. So there's no behind, uh, behind the bar and uh, so you don't know which, which way is uh, customer facing, so it's kind of an open thing. You can walk around the bar, you can talk to the barista uh, while she's making uh, coffee and so on. Um, this is the co-working space. Uh, the name Paper Hub is because when we started we didn't have any money. So we uh, built all the furniture from paper mache, you can see it here in the bottom or, or the shelves and so on. And uh, with some bull markets we were able to actually buy some furniture, so <laughs> you can also see some real furniture, but if you need furniture and you don't have money, paper mache is a very cheap way to do it. Uh, this is the terrace of the co-working space. Uh, you can see 3D printed ashtrays with our triangle logo and, uh, and a beautiful view. Uh, so uh, that's, that's the area where people create all these projects. And this is the Institute of Crypto Anarchy. Uh, it has many different setups. We are also running a club uh, for people who are interested in, um, a, in these technologies. So they can use the space, discuss among themselves, and so on. Um, of course, uh, one of the main points of all this, thing, uh, all, all this work is decentralization. So we decided we should uh, do what we preach, and we decided to open source the concept. Um, so the first fork is in Bratislava, where I actually live. Uh, we started another parallel police. Uh, it's just opening right now. And we are also open sourcing all the know-how, how you can start your own, how to run, a, run a, a cafeteria, how to run an incubator institute, how to actually make it work when your base currency is going up and down all the time and <laughs> you know, your unit of account and economic calculation is getting a little bit more difficult, which is what I will talk about. And, um, one of the goals is that if we think that if we bring more people to cryptocurrencies, if we help businesses help build the ecosystem, and at the same time we have some coins which we can hodl, we will all profit. So we uh, view it as a non-profit, but uh, uh, ultimately I think it's going to help us all. Uh, I really like what Eric said, that small scale is important. It's not about only about the big projects, but it's uh, if it actually works, if people can uh, learn how, how all these works and so on. Um, we also are experimenting with decentralizing internally in Bratislava, so we are uh, making uh, all the parts as independent as possible and trying to avoid hierarchy and only focus on coordination. So the decentralized version, this was the vision of the space. Uh, this is the cafeteria, also open bar, and uh, institute on the other side, uh, which is also uh, going to host the incubator. The part in the middle is especially important because we call it the moon. So if you are wishing for the moon to become a reality, come to Bratislava. Each step you cross when you go uh, upstairs uh, will add $1,000 to Bitcoin, hopefully, <laughs> but don't ever come down. Um, that, that's a place that is um, uh, kind of flexible. If there's not enough space for people to drink coffee, they can do it there. If they want to watch a talk, they can do it there as well. So this is how it works um, with a talk in progress, which is about uh, being global and flexible and getting rid of your tax residency or moving it somewhere else. Um, I should mention that Institute of Crypto Anarchy, uh, both in Prague and now starting in Bratislava, is streaming everything online and uh, for free. And we have countless hours on, uh, on cryptos, discussions, uh, talks. We had, I, I think, a lot of the speakers that spoke at this conference. And the program is really full, so if you need a small dose of uh, crypto uh, knowledge, you can get it almost every week on our uh, public channels. So please watch them. Unfortunately, not all of them are in English, but there are plenty of them with uh, foreign guests, so 
This is how the cafeteria looks like. There's a Bitcoin ATM. Uh, so, uh, this is some, some, uh, some food that you can buy. So, the way it works, uh, most people that come to the place, uh, it's their first experience with cryptocurrencies. So, they need to be able to buy the cryptocurrency at the ATM uh, and uh, then be able to spend it immediately, which is very important. Uh, we had some uh, amazing practical experience, uh, which is, I think, uh, very important to, to have if you only think about cryptocurrencies and all these technologies. Uh, uh, from white papers and blogs, you don't, you know, <laughs> realize uh, what happens when a 75-year-old lady wants to get an es espresso and pay with cryptos. It's a completely different experience than what you would get from reading, say, a lightning white paper or something like that. So, uh, first of all, um, uh, in Czech Republic, uh, the government introduced uh, electronic monitoring and submission of transactions. So it is mandatory for any business to submit all the transaction uh, when they happen and then print the confirmation number on the receipt. The Minister of Finance, when he was uh, discussing with uh, Andreas Antonopoulos, uh, said that, oh, my electronic submission system is almost like a blockchain. You get a confirmation of transaction. So he didn't, didn't get it quite well, but uh, what we are doing is we are saying that we are uh, already transparent because all the transactions are already in the blockchain, so we are boycotting this. And we are one of the few businesses that don't actually submit this transaction despite what is written in the law. Um, we are testing the real-world usability of cryptocurrencies. So when we started five years ago, you couldn't, for example, some mobile wallets couldn't spend an unconfirmed transactions. They were not looking in the mempool for transactions. So uh, people bought their first uh, Bitcoin at the ATM, and they were sitting and waiting until they can buy an espresso for 10 or sometimes uh, 15 minutes until the transaction was confirmed. So that is the difference between how things should work and how they really work. So we had to re uh, start recommending particular wallets that didn't have this problem. Uh, we had a problem with high fees and it's a real problem. Uh, the solution wasn't to wait for uh, 18 or 30 or however uh, months uh, for the Lightning Network to, uh, uh, to become a reality. Sorry, Bitcoin maximalists, we need to sell espressos every day to survive. <laughs> so the second best thing was to start accepting Litecoin, which uh, worked and uh, it was uh, the main currency that was used uh, also the last Congress, when the fees were really high, because paying uh, five uh, euros for a transaction fee for two euro coffee, I think it's even cheaper than that, is uh, probably not going to impress anyone as the future of money. Um, we did experiments with Monero, we accept also Monero, because we are proud crypto anarchists and we like fungibility. Uh, but it has its own set of problems. So it's the same problem. In Monero, you cannot technically spend an unconfirmed transaction. So the same problem, you buy Monero in an ATM because most people don't have Monero when they come in. And then they need to wait for half an hour until they can pay for a coffee. Uh, which makes some people uncomfortable. Of course, they can order coffee and uh, drink it and pay later. That's not a problem, but it's still not very comfortable. Also, when they pay for the coffee and then they decide that they uh, want, uh, let's say, a cake, they need to wait another half an hour because they're going to spend change, which is also not confirmed. <laughs> So, uh, there are some real practical use cases. Uh, the same problem is currently with Lightning Network, because if people uh, buy their first Bitcoin, they need to open a channel first, and it needs to confirm. So, that's not really right now usable for, for our use case. If people come and uh, have a, uh, already an open channel, uh, we would like to support them. We are working on accepting Lightning Network payments, of course, because we love the technology. But for the most common use case of people not having cryptos when they enter and they want to learn how to do it, uh, it's not really an, uh, an option. 
So we've been experimenting with paper wallet printers, we've been making our own paper wallets, we've been doing NFCs. Some people have NFC implants, so if you want to research usability, this is the easiest way to pay. You just wave in front of the NFC sensor and the transaction um, happens. And uh, uh, this, uh, this uh, terminal uh, supports all kinds of scanning private keys, public, uh, showing public keys, uh, NFC payments and so on, and it's made by General Bytes, that's the manufacturer of Bitcoin ATMs as well. Uh, so, as all interactions are in cryptos, we pay uh, and accept uh, only or mostly cryptocurrencies. We have uh, board members who I believe some of them pay in fiat, I'm not sure. Um, so how to, how to do this? How can you survive running a business if your base currency value is going up and down all the time? So uh, the way is to just say, okay, volatility is what we expect and what we count on, and let's turn it into advantage. So how do you do that? So this is a very bright <laughs> chart. Uh, so let's say someone buys a coffee. Part of, the, uh, part of the payment is to cover our costs, so coffee beans, baristas, uh, you know, energy and so on. Part of it is profit, which uh, it doesn't matter what we do with it in, the, in this case. And then part of it is for further investment. So let's say if we want to buy a new coffee machine or uh, improve something in the place, we need some funds to... Um, uh, uh, wh where we save and then we can use it. So we use two different strategies uh, to battle uh, volatility and use it. Uh, for the cost, uh, we pay all the costs as soon as possible. So at the end of the shift of the barista, uh, he gets paid or she gets paid. Uh, that means that the uh, Intraday volatility is not that high. Sometimes they will get a few percent more, sometimes a few percent less, but it will average out. So it doesn't matter. Uh, we pay invoices uh, as soon as possible. <laughs> so uh, if we order coffee and coffee beans, we don't wait the net 30 days because our currency can go down 30% and uh, there goes our, our profit margin. Uh, so very short accounting intervals uh, on the cost side. Uh, on the capital fund, we do the exact opposite. We do as long as possible. Uh, we uh, we know what was the uh, what was the value of the coins as we got them, and we try to spend them only if their value is 30% more. So we don't predict, we don't trade, we don't know what will happen, but we can see. Okay, the price is now 30% higher than the value of this you take, so we can spend it. And that means that we turn the volatility into our advantage without actually being good traders. We are not good traders, me especially. I'm very good at losing money when trading. Uh, but we can see uh, the state of reality, the state of the market, and say, okay, now we can save 30% on our capital costs by spending it now. Uh, that means that we don't know when we can buy that new coffee machine or that new furniture. But uh, so we are completely uh, driven by, by the market itself. So this, this is for operation. In Bratislava it was more difficult because we had to actually build the place. Um, uh, we rented a completely empty building without electricity, wiring, water, and everything. So uh, we spent a year actually building what you, what you saw. And um, uh, unfortunately, we raised most of our money uh, in January and February <laughs> in crypto. Uh, so if anyone uh, tells you that uh, Bitcoin is a good store of value, <laughs> it depends on the time frame. So, uh, we, have to, uh, we had to uh, find more funding again because uh, um, our funding basically went down to uh, half or even third. Uh, uh, so how to do? We had some coins, but we didn't want to spend them because they, they, their value was lower. So we asked in the community if anyone is uh, willing to... Uh, uh, to uh, uh, give us some loan. Uh, we said, okay, we have this Bitcoin, we can give it you, to you as a collateral because we are a non-profit. So you can be sure that uh, 
uh, that we will pay you back, otherwise you can just sell the coins. Uh, but, uh, you know, we can give some interest rate. So we got fiat, we could start building and paying suppliers, construction companies and so on. But we still kept the upside on Bitcoin, which uh, didn't happen actually. Um, but uh, we still believe it will eventually. Uh, it is quite low risk for both sides. Uh, we should uh, really refeed the collateral if the Bitcoin goes down, but that's uh, probably the only, only downside for us. Uh, and we can, even in bear mar market in huge downtrend, we can actually uh, proceed and move forward in, uh, in this project. Uh, the problem is that the capacity is limited because some people uh, wanted to, uh, uh, to help us uh, with collateralized loans, but then the capacity ran out and of course on the market the interest rate uh, is too high. So we, uh, so we found uh, uh, some other options. Um, also note uh, some people <laughs> thought that it's a good idea to go to a bank to ask for a loan. Uh, doesn't work if you're a non-profit without uh, funding. Also, we are crypto positive, so uh, it's kind of a problem because you don't have uh, any account movements on the official bank account or a very little account movements. And then also we did this project. Uh, this is the National Bank of Slovakia, which is a branch of European Central Bank. So we enlightened it with the logo of Bitcoin. Maybe you have seen the video. Uh, we, we did this to a few more banks, so I would say they're <laughs> not a very... Thank you. <laughs> um, so we said that they're uh, probably not very happy to, <laughs> to uh, give us any money at all. Uh, um, yet they didn't, didn't close our bank account yet. But uh, there were a lot of companies in Slovakia and Czech Republic that got their bank accounts closed. Thank you. Um, so what are our options when no one wants to lend us money? Uh, we can find more funding, which we are still doing. Uh, we, uh, there's some ongoing funding that uh, the members of the advisory board, some of them are even here are sending us money every month, so uh, this is still happening. Uh, we could sell the crypto that we have, which is... Uh, uh, no, it, it hurts. <laughs> um, uh, we could apply for an, some EU grant scam scheme or a state subsidy, uh, which <laughs> we wouldn't do because we are a parallel society and state is our competition. We are a direct competitor to the state, at least that's how we perceive ourselves. We could do an ICO, uh, which uh, we decided uh, we didn't want to do because uh, most people don't care about some uh, stupid uh, Bitcoin coffee place in Bratislava. They probably don't even know where Bratislava is. <laughs> uh, we could be jerks and don't pay inv invoices and wait with the opening for a, for a bull market or maybe steal a dishwasher. That's one of the main missing components right now. Or, uh, and this is a really bright idea, we could print some money. Um, so, uh, and without ICO, so how do you print some money? You know, only central banks can print money. No, that's not the case. Uh, for example, Tetra uh, has nothing to do with the Federal Reserve and they're printing dollars as they wish. Maybe they, um, uh, they have some backing, maybe they don't, it doesn't matter, but they're creating units of money. Uh, there are also Euro dollars, which are uh, also newly printed dollars, which have nothing to do with uh, Federal Reserve system. There are commercial banks that are printing money. And why, why shouldn't we print money? I think let's democratize and decentralize printing money. It's a, it's a good idea. So um, we could print some fiat. And we think that the best fiat is backed by crypto. Uh, so we decided to give a try to MakerDAO and DAI. Um, DAI is a stable coin, which is backed with collateral of Ether. Uh, all those Bitcoin maximalists that would like to start throwing things at me right now, please instant send, our, uh, send some Satoshis to our wallet, that will help more. <laughs> so we don't have to sell our crypto for Ether, our Bitcoin for Ether. Um, but 
what I want to point out is that we are not using this stabilizing property of DAI. Uh, we are using the fact that um, DAI is created by putting in a, a collateral in ether, and that's how you can create new units of DAI. So essentially print uh, something that is kind of pegged to US dollar. By the way, if the peg breaks and uh, DAI falls to 50 cents or something like that, that would be amazing because uh, it would really uh, lower our costs of financing. So uh, the collateral has to be at least 150%. If it goes below that, it gets liquidated. So we need to find another hodler of Ethereum or a wannabe hodler that is going to buy some Ethereum. Uh, we will convert our crypto to Ethereum put together more than 200% collateral with this another person who is holding Ether anyway. Uh, we will mint uh, new DAI coins. Uh, the Ether is locked. And uh, we will convert DAI back to crypto, buy a dishwasher, and uh, pay some invoices. So that's, uh, that's how we solve this issue. Benefits, uh, as our other reasonable option is to sell all crypto, we can keep at least some upside, at least of Ether, which is better than no upside at all. Uh, if Ether goes down, we just lose the collateral, so that's the same as selling crypto. Uh, but uh, Dishwasher is already cleaning the first residues of our hipster flat whites that we sell to people. If Ether goes up, we split the profit, the, the upside, uh, with the, with, the, with the other party, but uh, still uh, keep some upside of Ether. So uh, we were able to uh, finish this place. We are opening it. Uh, the grand opening is in October, but we are already doing events. So since October, you can, uh, you can get also coffee during the day, but now we are only doing uh, evening events, and some people are working there. Okay. And um, yes, this is our vision. Uh, uh, just one sentence. Our vision is a world where everyone can exit from the legacy state system to enter a voluntary world according to their wishes. Thank you very much. Questions? No? I'm sorry.